Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. He's gone from starring in a Channel 4 sitcom to being Tom Cruise's wingman in the Mission Impossible films and powering the Enterprise in Star Trek. It's the fabulous Simon Pegg. <laughs> Simon, so, so, you look great, Simon. But you've got—have you got a cold at the moment? Someone told me you had a—you were struggling with the flu or something. I've, no, I've got a slight snivel, okay. uh, which I picked up on Monday, when my daughter sneezed in my mouth. Ooh, wow! <laughs> wow. How old is your daughter? She's 22. No, uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's four, and I, uh, she came home from school, and you know, obviously, when your child comes home, you're always like, "Hey!" Yeah. And I picked her up in my arms, and I went, "Hey!" And she just went, Bleh! "Oh!" <laughs> And I felt it hit the back of my throat. Oh, wow. I, I honestly, okay. it was like I felt my tonsils just get coated. Oh. And uh, I was like, yep, I'm going to be ill tomorrow. You're going to get that. if you're in a house full of sick people, you think, oh, if I don't touch that, I'll be okay. Wash if I don't wash lot. your hands. Yeah. If someone sneezes in your mouth, yeah. forget it. Just yeah. buy shares in lockets. If the saliva <laughs> leaves their mouth and goes into the back of your throat, there's a chance <laughs> that no amount of washing is going to get rid of that. And then last night I was getting her ready for bed and she said to me, I was putting her pyjamas on and she was really wriggling around as kids do sometimes. And I said, please, babe, please, uh, daddy's a bit ill. And she went, yeah, I know, I spat in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You know, as I, just before I came on, Damon had leant over to me and went, keep it brief. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, the reason why Simon's come on today for us is because there's a DVD out. This film came out, I didn't go and see it. I, I was away when it came out, so I didn't get to see it at the cinema here in the UK when it came out. And it was no, I thought it was going to be huge, and it should have been huge. It was such a good film. It's called The World's End. It's out we got on... hit by the weather in the UK in the summertime. It was that, that really hot week. And, and so people didn't no want to go and sit inside, maybe. But we did fantastically in America. But I don't think people knew what it was going to be enough, to be honest with you. Because, like, Shaun of the Dead, you knew that's a film. It's a funny film about zombies. Hot Fuzz, you knew that was a funny film about uh, cops. Here, this is the third in the trilogy, and it's sort of a funny film about a kind of a robot zombie type apocalypse thing from space <laughs> and a pub crawl. And it's I don't know whether it's. a film about midlife crisis, really. It's a film about five guys that get together. Uh, they're united by this one very mercurial guy who never grew up, Gary King, probably the most irritating character I've ever played. The most, my most favourite character as well. Yeah, very endearing. Yeah, he is, but he's deeply troubled and he, he, he's trying to recreate this pub crawl they did when they were 19 years old. He gathers together his, his, his old crew and none of them want to go, they all hate him. And, uh, but he manages to drag them back by sheer force of will and they go back to their hometown of Newton Haven where they grew up, which is like this garden city. And, um, and they realise that everything feels a little different. It's not like it used to be. And the reason for that is something rather specific. The film's called The World's End. It's out on Monday. It's a really genuinely funny and touching film. Have a look at this. There you go. I just... Um, <laughs> I, I realise... I, I introduced that clip and said this is a film and it's quite touching and then you see a guy getting his head smashed off in a lavatory. That wasn't the most touching. There's a lot of emotional stuff in there as well. Yeah. Of course, in the movie, there's a lot of beer being drunk. Presumably, yes. that's not the real beer, of course. No, no, we, we couldn't drink real... I mean, the, the, the pub crawl is 12 pubs, and it's 60 pints. Wow. And we have to do all 12... The, the Gary King, my character, he, his main drive, despite what you see happens, despite there's something very strange going on in the town, the most important thing to Gary is to drink he wants his to 12 finish pints. It. He needs yeah. to finish this unfinished business Absolutely. from his youth. Because yeah. it, it means something to him on a deeper level that we find out later on. But we couldn't drink beer on set because no. that would be foolish and uh, non-productive. Uh, <laughs> so we charged the props department to come up with this very drinkable liquid, which was basically water, because we couldn't drink non-alcohol lager, because yeah. even that has a placebo effect. And you don't drink, you don't drink a lot don't in drink real life, at all. Do no, no, I don't, I'm not a drinker. Okay. So, so how do you fake being drunk, then? I have been drunk. Okay. That's one of the reasons I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, you weren't, you weren't a heavy, heavy drinker, or were you? No, but I, I, I hit 40, and I thought, I, I wanted to be a, a present dad. You know, when, yeah. we, when we had Tilly, I, I thought, right, I, I don't want to be there in the morning. I want to have my mouth open, ready to receive the sneezes. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be like, oh, get away. Yeah, yeah. So I quit, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad, because I feel a lot healthier. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel free of it. What's great about the movie is you do sense that they are genuinely getting quite drunk, and, and, yes. and, and it works for the film, because, of course, then they get almost foolhardish and reckless yeah. and the well, we so, had to do, we had to, we, in a film where you drink 12 pints, supposedly, we had to measure our drunkenness uh, very carefully, so we had to know how we'd be after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or up to 12, and also know what it would be like if you'd had 8, but just had a massive fight with some robots, <laughs> because that adrenaline would take the edge off it a little okay. bit. But you, basically it goes, you stay completely lucid until about 7, 
and then about... So when you had the first couple of pints, no one would know necessarily? No, you can, be, you can be very sober on five or six pints if you really try. And then you start to get a slow blink in your eyes like that. And then your head starts to wobble a bit like that. <laughs> and the slow blink helps you with that. And then you start burping quite a lot <laughs> because the lager's so gassy. And then you start forgetting who you are and everything's sort of slightly confusing. And then at the end of it, you're just like, <laughs> everything's like, <laughs> everything, you dismiss everything because <laughs> I'm not <laughs> drunk, no. And, uh, and, and so we had to kind of do these workshops whereby we, we could pick your four. Okay, normal. Six. Normal. Seven. You know, and then... <laughs> so we can just drop into it any time. <laughs> so if you're out with people who are drinking, if you are, are we, do you fake it to keep up no, with I it? No, I hate... That, that's the weird thing. If you ever uh, give up drinking, the one thing that you'll discover, which is really strange, that will be a complete surprise to you the first time it happens, when you go out with all your friends, around about 10 o'clock, they all become assholes, <laughs> And you just think, Where, what, how, how, what did, when, when did that happen? But it's always been the case. It's just you were an asshole too. Okay? It's a very strange thing. I even get it with my own wife. I'm like, oh, it's her. <laughs> oh, it's you, is it? Uh, so, yeah, it's a very odd thing to go. It's, 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 it's one of the toughest things about not drinking is yeah. being around drunk people. Yeah, and there's only so much Diet Coke you can drink with, even. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so what's happening with Star Trek? You're doing another Star Trek movie? Is that happening? Yes, there? we are. We're doing it, I think we're doing it this year, as far as I know. I know they want to do it quickly, and JJ's obviously busy with Star Wars, so they're going to bring in a, a, a hot young director, I'm sure, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it um, as soon as possible. And you've got another Mission Impossible movie you're doing this year? I think so, Mission Impossible 5, yes. Wow. What an incredible career you've got now. It's all right, yeah, it's nice. Keeps the, uh, keeps the wolf from the door. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not drinking either? No, I, I feel like, I, I just feel like that, that, that's improved my life enormously. I, but you're still I, using a lot of heroin. A lot of heroin, yeah, yeah a lot of smack. <laughs> I'm mainlining my daughter's mucus. <laughs> uh, well, listen, once again, I'm not just saying this because I, I like him, but uh, World's End is just so much fun. You guys make such great films together. I hope you and Edgar have got something else planned. Yeah, absolutely, we'll work together. Ant Edgar's off doing Ant-Man, which is very exciting. Well, but Marvel, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine a future when I don't work with Edgar and Nick, so... That's uh, nice to know. Ladies and gentlemen, a very charming and very lovely man, Mr. Simon Pegg. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Still to come, Dame Edna Everidge will be here, and we've got live music from the fabulous Gary Barlow. Don't go away, join me after the break.